Now these problems used to really, really get me. I don't know why, because sometimes when you see it, you go, ah, oh, and then other times you see it and you lose it. This is one of those problems where I would always lose it. G of X plus two is equal to F of X minus five plus three. F of seven equals six. And what the heck is G of 14? Well, I'm gonna start backwards. F of seven equals six. F of seven equals six. How do I get F of X minus five to be F of seven? Because that would be so nice. If I could make this, if I could make this f of 7, then I could just say f of 7 is 6, right? And I could start substituting in values there. But how do I prove that? How do I, how do I make that happen? Well, f of x minus 5 is going to be f of 7 when x equals 12. So f of x minus 5, let's write that down, f of x minus 5 is going to equal f of 7 if x equals 12. Okay, so if I'm looking at this entire thing as x equals 12, then I would be putting in a 12 in for this x, and wait a second, if I'm considering them together, then 12 is also that x. Well, 12 plus 2 is 14, and that's exactly what I need to find. So let's do that. So, g of 12 plus 2 is equal to, remember, it's equal to this. It's equal to all of this. So it's going to equal f of 12 minus 5 plus 3. Well, an f minus 12 plus 5, that's just f of 7. An f of 7 is 6. So we have g of 14 is equal to 6 plus 3, which is equal to 9. So that's an example of how you would kind of meander through a problem like this where you're having to find something a value of a function in relation to two other functions so that is definitely a skill that you can use or, or a technique a tool that you can use you can let x equal anything but if you let it equal 12 for this case you have to let it equal 12 everywhere you use x for that same